ready to go once more as the kick's away. Here's Pierce for the return. And a decent return there. He'll get this up just shy of the 30. They'll break the huddle. Coming up now for first and 10. Stroud. He'll find Woods. That one is caught. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. Second down and three. To throw is Stroud. There's that man again. Another catch. Do a nice job there to move the chains early in this drive. But now as they approach midfield, continue to keep your foot on the gas. Don't get conservative. Don't start sitting on the ball. Cross midfield and go. Anytime you find yourself in your opponent's side of the field, you have to be thinking points. On first down, it's Stroud. Match to the tight end, Stover. And he's down inside the 40-yard line. What a luxury that certain teams, when they have a guy like this, I mean, not only is he the big target, but then to have that size and speed to run away from these linebackers and do so much of his damage after the catch. Dell motioning over. They'll go play action with Stroud. A hit as he throws there. It's going to wind up incomplete. The pressure got to him that time, and it'll set up second down. The whole idea of the play-action pass, Mike, is that you can slow the pass rush down enough that it allows longer, slower developing pass concepts to open up downfield. But in this case, they were on him so fast that by the time he got his head around, that ball needed to come out. There was no timing and ultimately led in an incompletion. Now a third and two. Back to throw. Stroud. He's got his man complete to Dell. Now they're entering the area of the field, especially with the amount of yards they've gained on this possession, Mike, where it feels like a touchdown is critical. For the defense, settling for a field goal here, especially with the ball where it is, feels like a win. On first and ten, here's Stroud. That's caught right side, the tight end Schultz. He is in. Dalton Schultz, touchdown Texans. We were talking during the break, Mike. We felt that this was kind of a do or die drive. They felt like they needed to come away with the touchdown here, and now they're showing a little life. Yeah, a little, little bit of belief, don't you think? Everyone on that field knows they've been a part of a comeback before. It's a pretty big mountain, but a good way to get started here to begin this half. Stroud comes to the line. The Texans going for two. He'll look to throw. That is incomplete. And the two-point conversion is unsuccessful anytime you fail on a two-point try there's always going to be second guessing about whether that was the right play call in this case they decided to throw the ball which i like they just need better execution and they end up coming up a little short And so after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. Reynolds now on the return. 
and he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. The Lions' offense getting things in order as they trot out for this next possession. And as we look back now, Greg, at how we got here, we got a ton of highlights of the offense so far. In particular, great passing. Yeah, and if you want to score points in the NFL, Mike, there's no secret. You've got to do it primarily through the air. And with three touchdowns here so far, that's exactly what we've seen. It's been deep balls. It's been intermediate shots. It's been good run after catch. This has really been high-level offense on display right from the jump. They'll come up here first and 10. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. They'll go play action with Goff. Look in the sideline, that's St. Brown. An enviable spot to operate from. Here's second in inches. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. Off play action. He'll set up to throw. Right back to St. Brown. They connect again. And they're going to work this down inside the 45. I can't tell you, Mike, how many of these offensive skill players around the league, they look at man coverage as like a personal offense. After that last completion on the way back to the huddle, I think he had a few choice words for him. I think he said, hey, man, you can't guard me one-on-one. -on -one. You better ask your coach for some help because if he doesn't, you're going to be in for a long day. On play action, he'll set up to throw. Open man downfield. It's Laporta. 20 yards on that pass play. First down, Detroit. We spent so much time talking about arm strength, and while that certainly has a place in the conversation, look at the touch of this ball, Mike. It's a deep corner out. This ball needs to have the right pace, the right trajectory to not only get it over the second-level defenders, but get... The challenge flag is out. D'Amico Ryan saying, I want another look at this one. At issue, was he able to stay in bounds? The NFL rules, you're looking for either two feet or a body part that is not a hand to be down with possession of the ball. No bobbling, the ball not moving around. He has control, so that's what the referee is looking at here. So the challenge, unsuccessful, and they are out of challenges now for the remainder of the game. First and ten, it's Montgomery. And the defense all over this one. They knock him down, it'll go down as a loss of two. The speed and the get-off by the big interior defensive tackle, Mike. I mean, he got through there so fast, he almost took the handoff himself. Last play went the wrong way. It sets up second and long. It's second down and 12. Out of the shotgun, it's gone. And that one is complete along the boundary. Good job of getting those feet in bounds. This is why the timing of these routes is so critical. If that ball is thrown a little bit later, he's unable to keep his feet in bounds, but instead the quarterback is on time and accurate, and the receiver does a nice job not only securing the catch, but ensuring that both feet remain in bounds. Intercepted. That's the safety, Jimmy Ward. And a good return here. He is out of bounds, up past the 30. When you find yourself in this situation, you're on defense, you're defending your own goal line, you got to take some chances. You've got to try to force a turnover and make a play and get off the field. That's exactly what this defender did. Takes a chance, bets on himself, and comes away with a pick to save them some points.
So they come to the line for first down and 10. On play action, Stroud. He's trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not and be taken down there. If there's any silver lining for this drive, Mike, it's the fact that at least this sack occurred on an early down. So I guess technically they have a chance to claw themselves out of this hole, but that's the third sack of the game. And this defense doesn't show any signs of slowing down. A second down throw for Stroud. And they're going to get him a second time. He goes down again. The defensive coaches, they preached all week, Mike. They have to have relentless pursuit of this quarterback when he tries to extend the play. So often it results in a great play for the offense and a big pickup. This time, because of that pursuit, it leads to a big loss. So, backed up after the sack, and now it's third and long. Here's Stroud. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Here's the quarterback doing everything in his power to extend this play, and none of his guys could get open. You got to see someone separate. Work with your quarterback. Go into scramble second reaction mode, and... So also give some credit to the back end doing a nice job plastering with their assignment and he had no choice but to throw it away. A fair catch here. Called for and made beyond the 30-yard line. The Lions offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And he's had it going in the first half. Really had his way with the secondary. They have been powerless to stop him. Now they're trying to keep it going. On first down, it's gone. This one caught by Patrick. And he'll be tackled up around the 45-yard line. Now, so far here today, putting points on the board certainly hasn't been a problem. And plays like that are why. Think about it, Mike. Sometimes you just have to take what the defense gives you and not force something that's not there. And that mid-range pass results in a fresh set of downs. Goff to throw on first down. Got a man open, it's Patrick. And he's taken down inside the opponent's 35. This is what every offense looks to do, Mike. They want to attack the middle of the field. That's the most valuable real estate in football. And oftentimes, that's where the chunk plays come. Give it to your receiver on the move and let them do the rest. Set to go now on first and 10. Straight ahead, it's Montgomery. And this takes him into the red zone. He's brought down inside the 20-yard line. Pretty much just more of the same from what we saw with this back in the first half. And he doesn't need much. He gets a little bit of space, and then he can create the rest. It's the combination of patience, vision, and then the burst to hit the hole once he sees it. This guy's been a handful all day. To the right side, that's St. Brown. And they'll get about half of what they needed. It's a pickup of five and sets up second and five. Now Montgomery. And he will score. David Montgomery, touchdown Detroit. He's got another one, his second touchdown of the evening. When you start talking about the qualities of a top tier back in the NFL, Mike, we all talk about size, speed, the ability to keep your feet, the ability to have balance at contact. But the part we don't talk enough about is patience, understanding the blocking scheme, the timing, when to hit the hole, as much as what hole to hit. And 
I think you get a great example of what that looks like when it all comes together. He takes advantage of the scheme, and next thing you know, he hits his head on the goalpost. Bates, good, with the extra point. And the Lions are able to extend the lead. The kickoff team is out on the field, and we're back to it as the kick's away. Here's Pierce for the return. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. Stroud to throw here on first down. On the quick slant, caught by Tank Dell. And it'll be brought down as we tick towards the end of this third quarter. So no shortage of offense in this one as we end the third. And Sunday Night Football continues after this. Here's second and two. From the shotgun, C.J. Stroud. And they bring him down, but not until he crosses midfield. You know, it's really been a one-sided game, but how often do we see in the fourth quarter the team that finds themselves down by a lot they start to come alive. I think it's a combination of trying to end the game on a positive note, but also sometimes that defense getting a little lackadaisical. Stroud to throw here on first and ten. That's over the middle and caught by Dell. And he'll be taken down, but they are in business inside the 30-yard line. Well, it goes without saying. You want to play wide receiver in the NFL, Mike, how well can you change directions? How fast can you get your body from one direction to another? And when you can cut like this guy, I'm not sure how you guard him. Right back to Dell. He's got it again. That's catch three just on this drop. And it gets his team a first down. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They clearly have a mismatch in their favor. And every time they've looked his way, He's continued to make big plays. If I'm this coordinator, I think I'm giving him one more shot and see if he can push this thing over the goal line and come away with six. That's into the hands of Dell on the right side. And the Texans are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them down to the one. It's been a really good drive so far, but what I really like, Mike, is they're down here in the red zone and they continue to attack. Now, not quite a touchdown, but with first and goal, this defense certainly has their back against the ropes. They'll run here with Mixon. And he's into the end zone yet again. Joe Mixon. Touchdown, Houston. His big night continues. His third touchdown of the game. Well, it's not going to be enough, but at least they find the end zone at the end of a hard week's work. At least a little payoff with a touchdown, Greg. Mike, you can just chalk this one up in the column of too little, too late. And give credit to this offense for not going down without a fight, but they're not going to have enough time to find themselves back in this one. And so after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. 
to return it, it's Dorsey. Now an opening past the 30. Nice job on the return. He's down close to the 35-yard line. The visitors' offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been successful. He just processes things so quickly, making the right read seemingly every time. A carry here for Montgomery. And they get this one across midfield to the 47-yard line. Here's a case of an offense just piling on. You're really imposing your will on the defense. Everyone in the stadium knows you're going to run it. The defense knows it. You know it. And no matter what they do, they have no answers whatsoever. They'll run with Montgomery. And the defense was ready for him this time. Did not have the same room to run. That one's no game. We've seen this back have his way with this defense all game long, Mike. He's up over 100 yards for the game, but this time the defense said, we've had enough. They sold out to stop him. They hold him to no game. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. Throwing on second down. Goff. That one pinballs around, but it is incomplete. The tight end, Sam Laporta, the intended receiver. And it'll be third down. A rare miss for a quarterback that we've seen really come out on fire throughout this entire contest. I mean, his completion percentage, Mike, is well above league average. And frankly, it's really the biggest reason why they find themselves out in front. So, on fourth down, the Lions send out Jack Fox to punt. And we will not have a return here. This one angled out of bounds. On first down, it's Stroud. Catch made. That's worse. And he's going to be taken down at the 37. And this is a tricky part of the game for any defense. You find yourself protecting a late lead. And the age-old question is, do you remain aggressive? Do you try to just keep the ball from being thrown over your head and make everything be tackled and played in front of you? That's what every defensive coordinator struggles with, so they can't get too soft here as they try to hold on to this lead here late. Pretty clear approach here, Mike. You're just trying to take advantage of the size of your tight end versus a smaller defender, and you're just saying box him out and go up for an offensive rebound and get the ball at its highest point. In this case, it falls incomplete, but if they continue to get that matchup, this quarterback's not going to shy away from giving his big tight end a shot. On second down, Stroud. Who else? Another catch for his favorite target. From the gun, here's Stroud. He's got his tight end, it's Schultz. And he's gonna have the first down taken down after a short pickup of five, but it will keep the drive going. Well, we'll give a little credit here defensively. Even though they allow the first down, we've seen defenses really struggle bringing this big tight end to the ground, and they didn't allow him to pick up a bunch of yards after contact, but he was able to get just enough to pick up the first down. And that'll be a pickup of three. Yeah. 
second and seven. Stroud going to set up to throw. There's that man again. Another catch. Third and a yard. Here's Stroud. That's caught. Left side. It's complete. And it looks like he's going to have a first down. Nothing fancy there. Short completion, but it yields a fresh set of downs really just comes down to everybody understanding the situation. You realize, how many yards do I need to get for the first down? It just makes sure at least one of my receivers is past the sticks. That's where he went with the ball, and they're able to convert. Down inside the 10. And they're going to get this all the way down inside the 5. It's not a coincidence, Mike, that the best offenses in the NFL are all excellent at yards after the catch. It's a combination of a few things a highly accurate quarterback, and the ability of the scheme to get open players in open space. Once you do that, the rest is up to them. Well, a chance to get right back in it here. First down and goal. They look to run with Mixon. And he's got another one. Joe Mixon. Touchdown, Texans. What a night he's having. That's four touchdowns in this game alone. Well, Greg, the light's still on way down at the end of the tunnel here. They are climbing back into this one with that touchdown here in the fourth quarter. And they have a tall task ahead of them, Mike, but they have a chance. I mean, we've seen stranger things happen. Hmm. They got a two-possession game here late. They're going to need a couple stops, and they're going to need a couple things to bounce their way. And so after the touchdown, here's Fairbury to kick it off. To return it, it's Dorsey. He'll get this up to the 28-yard line. Nice place for the drive to start. The visitors' offense. And their running back, set to go once more. And it's hard to believe you could run the ball a whole lot better than he has. The vision, the cutback ability, the acceleration, the stats. It has all been on display throughout. Here's first and ten. Patrick motioning here. They'll go play action with Goff. Quick throw here is complete. He did a good job of making one man miss, but could not get away from this defense in the end. It turns into a loss of yardage. The quick passing game in the NFL, Mike, is so dependent on yards after the catch. you got to generate space with the scheme, and then it's up to the receiver to do the rest. In this case, nice job defensively, because this guy couldn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. They'll mark him down up at the 44-yard line. And this running game has really been rolling, Mike, all game long. The holes, the run lanes, they've been there consistently. Here's another nice run as they look to put this game away. They'll bring St. Brown in motion. On play action, Goff. That pass caught by Amon Ra. And he won't make it back to the line of scrimmage. Going to lose a yard as he steps out of bounds. Really well done here by the defense, Mike, executing this zone defense. And they've got to be able to pattern read. You're not just going to drop back to a spot and just play like a robot. Based on what the receivers do off the line, the defenders have different rules of where their zones move to. Well, they had that one dialed in right from the jump, and they were able to stop that play really before it got started. 
Very positive returns on that run. I mean, really, the only thing not to like is that they weren't able to move the chains. But you know what? The way he ran there, I think they go right back to him and see if he has even a bigger carry in him. They'll try and run it here with Montgomery. And he is going to have a Lions first down. He was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Nothing real fancy about this call here, Mike, right? And this third and short, just get the ball to your running back, make sure he has enough space to pick up the first down, and they're able to convert. They'll come up first and ten at the 40. Now, Goff. This one complete right side. And they're going to be set up in the red zone. They've got it inside the 15. An interesting decision there by the play caller to put this ball in the air. Mike, you're up by two scores. Traditional wisdom says, hey, we're up by two scores late in the fourth quarter. We've got to keep this clock moving. You don't want to risk an incompletion. Now, they convert. They're able to secure the catch and pick up a fresh set of downs. That's going to enable them to continue to burn more clock. And without a stop, their opponent's not going to get the ball back. On second down, Goff. He finds Raymond for the completion. And he's going to be dropped after a pickup of about five. And worth noting with that last completion, that's going to set an all-time record, most completions in a single game. Now Goff. To the end zone, but they can't connect. It's incomplete. They went for it all on that one and just a little bit off. Ball winds up hitting the ground. They've got to move forward. The opportunities are out there. Better execution, better location, and they got some big plays in their future. Another one through the uprights. He's four for four on the game. And the Lions add on to their lead. So anytime an offense comes off the field after settling for three, you always have to take the good with the bad. In order to get down there in field goal range, you had to do something positive to move the ball. But at the same time, how are we going to be able to finish these drives and convert for six the next time we get down there? Both teams ready to go once more as the kick's away. On the return, here's Sims. And they'll bring him down just shy of the 30-yard line. Texans offense and C.J. Stroud ready to get to work once more. And he has been masterful so far leading this offense, keeping the mistakes to a minimum, on point with his passes, generally one step ahead of the defense all game long. First and ten. To throw, it's Stroud. He runs with it. A first down on the scramble. A gain of 16. You know, Mike, I like everything about this play except the very end. You've already picked up good yardage. You've already picked up the first down. Now get down on the ground and protect yourself. There's no reason to take those shots. On first and 10, here's Stroud. That's caught, it's Damian Pierce. Hook him up on a second down and eight. Shot, 
Now Stroud. He'll find Woods. That one is caught. And they'll work this close to a first down, maybe just a tad short. And that's going to do it. With that last throw, he surpasses Norm Van Brocklin, most passing yards ever in a game. Van Brocklin at 554 over 70 years ago, 1951. Help from the O-line, help from the receivers, an incredible performance, an NFL record set here. From the gun here on third down, it's Stroud. And the defense can't come up with a stop there. Gain a seven and a first down. Critical third down conversion there, Mike. Now brings up a fresh set of downs. You find yourself here trailing in the fourth quarter. They got to go down and score, and they got to score fast. Stroud to throw here on first down. A very quick throw there, but not on the same page with his target. That's incomplete. He was looking for Joe Mixon coming out of the backfield. And that will lead to a second down. From the shotgun, C.J. Stroud. And it's complete to the sideline. Nice job getting both feet down inbounds. This may look like a simple connection, Mike, just pitch and catch. But I can promise you, the amount of time these two guys have spent together on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, just getting on the same page, seeing the game through the same set of eyes, it makes what's pretty difficult seem a lot easier. That ball is caught on the sideline and both feet inbounds. A big third down pickup for a first down. A gain there of 13 yards. Okay, so now you pick up that first down, Mike, but now there needs to be a sense of urgency. You know you need to score twice. So this one, ideally for the offense, results in a touchdown. But either way, this first score of the two needed needs to be fast because you need every possession you can here late in the fourth quarter. And he's close to another first down as he's brought down just shy of the marker. He'll come to the line now on second and two. And that ball incomplete over the middle. It's rare to see an offense that finds themselves trailing and say, well, their quarterback's been actually one of their biggest bright spots. Usually that doesn't go hand in hand. So it's a little surprising to see him miss a throw like that on a day where he's completed passes at a highly efficient rate. Now, on third and two, they'll, that's going to be intercepted in the end zone. It's the linebacker, Jack Campbell. So much of that play comes down to the defender's position. Being able to get himself to a spot to get his hands on the ball and a chance at that pitch. Mike, when that ball was thrown, me and you are sitting here saying, that's a touchdown, and instead, they force a turnover, and now their offense is back on the field. Montgomery to start the drive. And they'll get him down, but not before he takes this across the 30-yard line. And this is the point of the game, Mike, where you really can start leaning on your run game and try to close this game out. You've got the lead. You're in the fourth quarter. And they're able to pop off a big run. So, two minutes to play here in the second half. Greg and I back for the conclusion in a moment. One more time for Montgomery. He finds a seam, a good run, up past the 40. Let's give him nine on that one.
A good spot here, second and a yard. On the ground, Montgomery. And that one shut down pretty quickly. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, nothing more. Now the offensive coordinator's got a decision on his hand, Mike. It was second and one. He decides to go with a conservative run, gets stopped for no gain. He's in the exact same position now on third down. Does he try to change it up, or does he just turn around and hand it off again? They're going to try to run here with Gibbs. And he is going to have a Lions first down. They're able to convert, albeit not by much, but they get it on third and a yard. In real time from up here, Mike, I couldn't tell whether or not he got it at first glance, but I think after seeing the replays we have up here, it looked like he and his blockers got just enough, and they're going to be able to keep this drive alive. Victory formation here as he's down to a knee. So a win for the visitors, the Lions. This was a game where both offenses were up and down the field, marching the ball at will, matching each other point for point. But in the end, they got a few.